Hello, product people. Welcome to the Product for Product podcast, hosted by Matt Green, data advocate and product manager, and Masha Mikanovsky, product leader and author. Our goal is to serve the product community by helping you find products that can help make your work in product management easier. Thanks for joining us on another episode of the Product for Product podcast. Welcome back. Today, we're happy to have Henry Latham back on the show to chat about the no-code platform software. How are you doing, Henry? Good, good, good. Um, I was about to laugh because obviously we have tried to work out how we pronounce it. We're pretty <laughs> sure it's softer. Let's yeah, stick with that. Yeah, we're going yeah, anybody that. knows if anybody's got the sort of the inside details, the know-how, then then do let us know. Please let us know. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm doing well. Yeah, last last thing of the week for me. And nice sunny evening here in Oxfordshire in the UK. So nice. Awesome. Welcome back to the to show. We're after. we're excited to have you back. Yeah, yeah, great and, to be back. Nice to see you. And this time we are you're wearing a bit of a different hat, uh, mm-hmm. where you are actual user of a specific yeah. product that we're mm-hmm. covering, mm-hmm. and this one is for the no code uh, series. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. So, um, software we I, I actually uh, never heard about it before until we were doing the research for this uh, series. Um, mm. I, I saw the uh, demos. You, you were doing some great demos on um, YouTube and on your channels, mm-hmm. um, like ten minute challenge to build something, yeah. and then you compare them. So that's yeah. uh, that's yeah, actually yeah. pretty cool. So I really like that. I enjoyed those. Yeah, and nice. you actually the... because of that, and uh, you have experience also with other uh, products. So it will be great to hear what you sure. think about software relatively mm-hmm. to other products. But let's focus on software first. Tell us, uh, you know, how you got to use it. What do you do with it? Why you're using it, uh, etc. Mm. Yeah. So, so uh, just for a bit of context, very briefly. Uh, so, how I use no code tools is um, to teach product managers. Right. So, so, my role is to look at what's going on in the market and see which is the best tool ultimately. So, I recently did a ten minute challenge to test out four different tools, looking at it from the lens of if somebody's new to no code which is generally the case, you know, as of 2022, which is not just the easiest, right? Which, what can we do with it and which ones are easy to use? Mm -hmm. Because I've tried, for example, works a lot with Bubble, uh, Buddy Base are great tools, but very complex. So what is uh, software? Software is a no-code prototype. It is very similar to Adalo. And it's really, I describe it as a drag and drop no-code prototype, right? So you have, static content like a header block or a button and you also have dynamic content where you can pull in data like a list you can click on an item in a list you know if we take uh, uh, airbnb list of accommodation options you can then click on accommodation for example you can do things like search uh, filter so you can pass that data in different ways and as i said it's drag and drop and it works with Airtable. so that's mm-hmm. where the data is stored yeah, I, I like calling it a drag and drop no code because I think that that's important because, as I said, you know, there, there are some awesome complex tools out there where you can pretty much do anything. Bubble being a good example, Buddy Base being a good example. But I've seen so many people, to include myself, get stuck on stupid little details like the you know responsiveness, which we shouldn't be doing. Right. We should be um, uh, just seeing is the core concept valid? Is that oh, something yeah. that, that our target users value? So for me, it's a great tool and, it, and it's the one we've actually switched to quite recently as well. So it sort of okay. came out of nowhere and, uh, I, you know, I loved it. Tested yeah, out. that's cool. It. Yeah, last time we spoke, you, you mentioned Adalo. So yeah, yeah. yeah, I've been, you know, I've been, I've been flirting with all of these tools. Yeah. <laughs> promiscuous. <laughs> yeah. So switch, we've been switching every few months with these. <laughs> yeah. So you, you switch because you feel it's a better tool or you switch because you are using all of them and you... Uh, yeah, like, good, good, good question. So, so in terms of the tool itself, we switch because it's it's I consider it a better tool for our specific use case, which is mm-hmm. somebody who's new to no code. What I want them to, we want to do at Prod MBA is get the product manager to go through that build, measure, learn cycle. That's the most important thing. I don't care about per, you know, are we integrating detailed analytics? Are we building, are we able to build complex, um, complex conditional user flows, for example? Like we're, not, we're not interested in that. What I want to do is get them to just build something, have a, yeah, sorry, have a hypothesis, build something, 
get it out there, test it, learn from it, essentially. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and that does the job. And the second thing is it's a good introduction for non-technical product people to the key components of any application, whether coded or, you know, no code is mm. ultimately called it, but no code or, or a custom code application, because you've got the database, you've got the interface, and then you've got the logic connecting those two things. Mm-hmm. So the front end, the back end, awesome. and how they exactly. speak with each other. Which is, you know, sounds <laughs> obvious for someone that's comes from a technical background, or if you've had, you know, five years in product, but uh, people with one, two, three years experience in product, that that's actually quite new to them. Um, uh, that, that's an bits, um, bits and pieces. Yeah, that's a um, yeah, very interesting um, point of view. And, and from your experience and what you've seen with your different cohorts, what I kind of um, uh, feel that out there, you know, speaking with other product managers is that not enough product managers are actually utilizing no code for these mm. specific purposes of trying an MVP, building an MVP, failing fast, et cetera, in the mm. ideation and, and beginning of the discovery of the product. Uh, you do it intentionally as part of your program. Um, what do you see in the industry after they leave or to- people that did not come to your program? What do you hear from them? Do they use it? Yeah, or- good question. Good question. I mean, that's the important question, right? Is always, is it, do they mm-hmm. go and put things into practice? And it depends on the product culture. Um, yeah, it's a really interesting topic because there are times when no code is so there's a few different use cases for no code generator i think the first one is actually as with some you know like a figma prototype there's a lot of value in visualizing um or putting something together so that you you know you can go to your product team hey guys this is what we're thinking here's a basic version of terms of the logic in terms of the interface is roughly what we're thinking you know and then, and then you can sort of present that as the initial idea to start with so there's that there's that communication aspect and always visualizing it and experiencing it is more powerful than trying to explain something mm-hmm. um and then the second you know second is okay are you launching a whole new feature i obviously if you launch a whole new product always start with no code or start even with paper wireframes paper mm-hmm. wireframes then you could go to a figma prototype or nowadays with tools like soft it's so easy it's actually quicker going from what rough wireframe straight to a no code prototype in software with functionality than it is going and building a Figma prototype in mm-hmm. many cases. Mm-hmm. And, and, and maybe unless you have a design system, a whole different right. topic. Yeah. Um, so in terms of if we're ever launching a new feature or a new product, we always push people to go and, and do that. And now they have the tools, they sort of understand it. The challenge is you do need a you know, you need an arsenal of different no-code tools for different contexts. We'll, we'll talk about that in a in a bit, right? You know, what, where is uh, software better than, what are the use cases for it? Right. Um, so second thing, point, sorry. Yes, we, we push people to always use it with a new feature for launching MVP, for example. Go and use, go and use no-code, try and keep it as simple as possible. And yeah, the third thing is, um, you know, sometimes it's just not the right fit. For example, um, one of our students was looking at a, uh, a it was a, an app that would help you park. So it's sort of a journey planner and helps you park find parking spaces in busy cities. You can't prototype that. You know, we we did the Figma prototype and got really good feedback, but to actually test the core value of that, the core value of that product, it has to be built in some right. form. Scale it, right? Or, or some, yeah, manually done with people sort of allocating parking spaces or yeah. you know, standing in parking spaces. And were saying, they able hey, to? Really were they able to build it with a no-code uh, platform? No, 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 no. Mm-hmm. So he did it in Figma, got some, you know, good feedback. But, but that was really that in terms of the project as part of Prod MBA. Um, so there are times where it's just, it, it's just not that helpful, right? That's it, a limitation. It, it, yeah, it, there's a reason why we have to custom code stuff. Is my point. Yeah. Yes. Uh, at times, yeah. right? Yeah. So tell us some of the good use cases where software actually is a good um, place to start. Sure. Yeah. So there's three c- core use cases that, that I've seen. I mean, if you, you know, the website, I was having a look earlier, just to sort of uh, remind myself, you know, it says it can be used for client portals, internal tools, marketplaces, online communities, resource directories, static websites. Mm-hmm. Um, the three that we've seen it be useful for is firstly static content so it's got these really nice and quite a lot of drag and drop static blocks 
So not just buttons, but a, a whole, you know, hero content block where you've got the header, you've got the image and, uh, you know, sign up um, input field and button. And you just drop that in and it's pretty much ready to go. You don't even need to integrate with MailChimp or something. I mean, you can, which is great. It's got lots of integration, but you can just simply say, uh, send email to, you know, Henry at prod.mba, prod for example. So mm -hmm. it's super easy. You can get, uh, you know, landing page can literally be built in one minute from signing up. You could have that thing live. But beyond that, as I said, there's lots of different content blocks to build static websites. Um, you could use it for internal documentation at your company or with your product organization, for example. Um, you could use it for a you know, full, more complex website. You've got multiple pages and, and you know, five or six different sections. It's going to do all of that for you. You can put your testimonials on there, image, gallery, uh, header, sorry, hero section, as I said. So static content is great. Uh, I think they're probably the best tool out there um, outside of the sort of design led tools like Webflow. Second, um, as with Adalo, it's excellent for, dis uh, for displaying data, filtering data. So that's with tags and search and creating data. So for example, let's take a simple version of Airbnb. You can create lists of accommodation you could filter those by different tags. Um, you could search based on, is it the title? Is it the tag? Is it the location? Um, and then you could also create a listing yourself, an accommodation listing. So I just think if I missed anything on that, um, and that, sorry, that, that integrates with Airtable. So you're building your database in Airtable, which is super easy. Yeah. We'll it's... talk about the value of that later and why I like that. Okay. That's super easy. Um, and connecting it up to the front end again is very, very easy. Final use case I find is um, there are cases where we want to use, so we see a lot with the, the MVPs that are developed. Somebody wants to have some sort of conditional logic. So let's say one example was, uh, one of the apps was people's house plants tend to die if you're not very good at, if you don't know how to look after them. So it was a, you select different answers for the, it was based in Berlin specifically, like type of apartment, rough temperature, uh, how much light you have, and then it would recommend some plants to you. So that sort of basic recommendation algorithm. Mm -hmm. And I found it useful where you have, so you do that conditional logic in type form. You can't do it in, in software, unfortunately. But then you could send the user to different versions of the same app. Right? It's the same app displaying different types of data. So you sort of have three or four clones of the same software app. So you sort of hacking together a few different tools. Interesting. Uh, so that's the third third example we've seen. That's a really important point that we we always stress is we always think of no code as, as a sort of a single product. Like we've got software. Yeah. Usually it's a mix. We're throwing a few different things together, like email, Zapier, um, Typeform, and, yes. and software. So we always saying, you know, what what are you trying to achieve? Like what's the learning you want? And then try and hack together these different tools to to. to to do that as quickly and effectively as possible. And, and this is it's actually a very interesting point. I've seen it also with um, other things. I, I try to glide um, application with our previous, uh, glide, yeah. for mm. our previous um, uh, episode. And um, I was trying to achieve something and you're right. There was um, always something that I needed some a bit more. And then I looked into how do they integrate and can I uh, run APIs or can I mm. automate some web hooks or stuff like that? So um, from uh, maybe like if we're trying to build an MVP or we're trying to build um, uh, some prototype, we first have to create the flow of what is it the full thing we're trying to build and then see how all of the different elements in this flow will be done. Some of them will be so done by this exactly. tool, some of them by this tool, exactly. and then how everything is, is getting connected exactly. together. And one thing that, that and I'll, I'll happily link this in the show notes that we have our... our so it's product thinking board. It's a Miro template. Every single thing we do over our eight week program, we put into stripped down, simplified uh, frameworks in Miro. One of those is a board where it's got 15 to 20 actions with the corresponding tool that you might want to do with a no code prototype. Oh, I see. So For you example, already create, create, yeah. create database with the software logo. Okay. Um, onboard with conditional logic type form. Nice. 
nice send you know email notification or reminder gmail so, so we sort of exactly because then what i'll do in a one-on-one is sit with them and go okay so what do we want to achieve and then okay let's let's you know think of a bookshelf it's okay which books are we going to pull off and, and or right. a recipe right which ingredients do we take and put together to to give us that final outcome so with bubble bubble be more maybe complex from what i've seen moshe has mentioned are they trying mm. to do everything or is that like so it sounds like yeah, software so bu- bubble you could build bubble you could build every build, bubble you could build anything Okay. Um, I'm just yeah, thinking to, to some limitations. I'm not sure. So, yeah, so I was thinking, well, so you can build complex. So, for example, we used to teach people the 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 tutorial would be building Product Hunt. Right? So we built something called Product Hunter, and it was the same product essentially. And um, yeah, you've got all, lots of you know cool functionality there. So you've got the listing, upvoting, downvoting, user profiles, creation of data as well, and the issue with it is that one, not that many people have a technical background. Mm-hmm. So I'm not technical, but I could probably, yeah, I could, I could work as a junior front end developer, right? So right. I, can, I can build applications um, and, and comfortable with front end logic. I would have found it just the concepts of that, you know, Moshe, you dropped in words of APIs and web put. People might, you know, as a product manager, you might sort of know what those things are roughly, but actually the, uh, the okay, like how does that actually work in terms of how do you develop stuff one? up? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it gets more difficult. Or, so, you know, think of things like if you've never integrated, so Bubba, you can integrate mix panels. You can have full analytics on events and tracking, mm. which is awesome. Yeah. It's awesome. But if you've never integrated analytics, then it's, it, it's quite a step up. So as I said, it's, it all depends on what are you trying to do? Yeah, are it goes back to, to that, right? To, exactly. So, so for us specifically, for people that are new to no code, yeah. start with softer, a better version of a Dallo. Once you're, you're com- you know, you're, if you have an okay technical basis and you've gone and built something with no code, then why not go and try Bubble? You're going to get really stuck on the responsiveness, but, but, but you can do a lot with it. Okay. Um, and I actually, in terms of bubble, the alternative that I found best doing that 10 minute challenge, which didn't take 10 minutes, by the way, with bubble and buddy yeah. base um, was uh, sorry, a buddy base was a, a, a better version of bubble. Hmm. It felt much more intuitive. Um, mm-hmm. And I suspect that comes down to, as with all of these, there are so many new products coming out that yeah. the technical debt of the earlier products and bubbles, you know, only, I don't know, five, 10 years old, but it's, yeah. it's, it's one of the early ones. They planted their flag and, you know, they've, they put their cards down already and they've got this quite messy interface. It's not very intuitive. So unless they do a radical overhaul, they, they might be doing that. I don't know. You know, yeah. if they raise, raise a series, something, I don't know where they're at. And they, um, you know, really invest in, in re overhauling it, then it's going to be an awesome tool, but it was just very, very complex. Yeah, they're not as nimble anymore as some of the yeah. other these upstarts. Exactly. Okay. Excellent. Yeah, exactly. So, so let, let's go back to software. Um, so, mm-hmm. tell us a bit about um, you know why is it simple? What makes it uh, suitable for those specific scenarios, um, mm-hmm. etc. And and maybe try to you know with the audio only version that we have here of the podcast <laughs> um put a bit more pictures in the mind of our listeners about w- what software is all about so at its core what is software it is a way to within seconds drag and drop content blocks to create an interface the second aspect of it is creation of a database in airtable you know a, a separate product and you connect the two with just clicking a button and adding your Airtable ID mm-hmm. so that you're then pulling in that Airtable data to the drag and drop interface. Are but there other options to Airtable? Is there, is it, I saw that Airtable is like what they're- Just Airtable, really... just okay. Airtable. And I'll, I'll, talk, sorry, I'll talk about, so there's three things that I think are quite valuable in terms of features with software. And then I'll talk about why Airtable is one of them. Okay. So the first is the, the templates they have. I think that's true of all of these products. Start, you know, I'm, I'm somebody that I like, I'll just, I want to get a template and I want to just play around with stuff. Mm-hmm. So, so I've always done that design programs, like prototyping tools, no code tools. So I love their templates and they, and they're very useful, right? So there's things like a CRM. Let me just grab up the examples again. 
So you immediately open an account and you could create an investor portal, a client portal, applicant tracking, inventory tracking, full sales CRM system. They've got some marketplace examples there as well, like a co-living, I think is one of them. It, it, so you can actually just get started, right? So if I go, okay, I want to build a, you know, Airbnb for dogs. Okay, cool. I'm just going to pick that co-living template. Mm -hmm. Just mm -hmm. get started with that. And, and you're off you're to the races, running. yeah. right? You're up and running. Yeah, you just go to your data table and change the name of you know, your, your data points, right? Your title, location, et cetera. So it's as simple as that. So the templates mm -hmm. are really powerful. And again, actually, it's a, it's a good way to learn because you, 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 I think you have that moment, you go, oh, okay, I get it. I see the value of this tool. Right. And then you just get work backwards and adjust. Second thing, the drag and drop, again, both the static content, so for a landing page and also the dynamic content. Dynamic content is more limited. So it's really about lists of data and then clicking into those and you can show some tables. They do have paid um, some paid features like integration of a map. And sorry, finally, um, yeah, just working with Airtable, I think it's really important. So you've got that flexibility where you can integrate with different, you know, I think product nowadays, one key thing is the ability to integrate with different tools. So being part of different ecosystems and, and by having Airtable, you, you don't feel as with Bubble, you've got this sort of like messy database that you know you're going to have to throw away at some point. Mm -hmm. At least with Airtable, you sort of feel you've got the foundation for some sort of scalable future. Obviously, at some point, you're going to custom build that. But yeah, but I like that. Um, again, and also then in terms of integrations with stuff like Zapier or triggers uh, webhooks all this kind of thing you've just got a bit more flexibility there and that was unique about software and now glide have uh, as of last week just introduced that feature yeah i keep seeing Airtable pop up in all these different low code no code solutions it seems mm. to be like that's like something that a lot of these are leveraging yeah because it is a valuable tool in itself and so yeah, yeah, yeah. It kind of gets people up and running pretty quickly making sure you have the database structured correctly and uh, drive and, and that, I mean, that in itself, though, again, is, you know, you, you could go, say, if you, you listen to this and you're like, okay, um, Henry's not very interesting, but softer sounds interesting. You go check it out. You still have to, you know, we, we still have to teach people, like, how do you set up a database? Yeah. How do you think about that? So, so there is a learning curve outside of the tools that they've, and they've all got good tutorials and YouTube channels and stuff and documentation, but you, you do have to, you can get something up very quickly, but you need to work out. Um, so you need to, you know, understand the underlying principles of a database, of an interface, yep. of again, it's okay, what am I trying to achieve with this thing rather than just finding a, a cool tool to check out, right? Yeah. Yeah. So what are three things or, that you might want to see change or improved along the way when it comes to software? Good question. Yeah. Strong opinions on this. Um, <laughs> conditional logic would be one, so we display, so if anyone doesn't understand what that is, ability to display different pages or content based on user decisions. So if you know you have a question, an onboard, and do you like apple, sorry, do you like fruit or vegetables? The next page might show you a list of fruit rather than just the vegetables, yep. for example. Second thing, yeah, I, I think just that sort of more active in terms of the tutorials. So when you sign up, what's your experience with no code? And then and then giving you some sort of pointers or you could sign up for webinars, for example, webinar and like, okay, how do we set up a database, this kind of thing. And I think the third thing is not a problem with the platform, but it's coming back to that earlier question, like how do we get product people to use these tools more? Because that's in the interest of software, right? Mm -hmm. You know, they can build a great no code tool, but if we aren't, pushing a product culture and i wonder how that's done you know is that done outside of the core product as you know with webinars mm -hmm. educational material for example things like that 10 minute no code challenge i did why not show hey we're going to launch uh you know mvp launch whole product in a day and, and try and you know make sales with it for example so i think it's that if ev evangelism mm -hmm. i think would be the third third topic so sorry, recapping that. Yeah, first one would be um, sorry, conditional logic, right? First one, conditional yes, logic. Right, yeah. Second one, just that that when you sign up, how much experience do you have, and then giving you some sort of pointers and tips. And third one is 
a bit more evangelism, I think, in terms yeah. of getting more people to use these tools. Yeah, yeah. Mm. The, the, the interesting thing that you mentioned about uh, using only Airtable is that we saw with Glide that they support um, Google uh, Sheets. They Google support sheets, yeah. their own internal yeah. Sheets or database. And then they are now supporting also Microsoft Excel spreadsheets uh, as, as an alpha, I think. So yeah. I wonder why um, software decided to go with Airtable specifically. I mean, what's I think, the... Uh, yeah, I'm not sure. And, and so one thing, to, a comment to make actually, Glide is one of the tools I'm keeping a really close eye on because they... So initially they were super, or still great tool, super simple. You just work with Google Sheets, mm -hmm. easy for anybody to create an application. Yeah. Yeah. Um, they're improving really quickly. They're bringing in really good, you know, cool new features. Again, the Airtable one has basically put them on a par with softer. So that they're, they're definitely a product I'm keeping an eye on. They seem to be innovating very, very quickly. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm not sure. I'm not sure, honestly. I suspect it's something to do with, from speaking to product managers, Airtable is a tool that many people use if they're doing some, whether it's, uh, you know, mapping clients in an early, some C basic CRM system in mm -hmm. an early stage startup or mapping out a database before that's handed off to developers. That, that, that seems to be a tool that's been used quite often. So, so I think it's quite a smart play in how they position themselves by saying, yeah, you know, we understand yeah. you as product people. We work with the tools that you like using. Mm -hmm. We're not just for everybody, right? Everybody uses Google Sheets, but we know that product people like using Airtable. Yeah, maybe it's also the way that they uh, kind of uh, grew into it and, and how they started. Mm. Uh, because to me, it feels more that uh, Airtable actually would be used by, you know, founders and, and um, people that are yeah. just one, one man shop uh, or one woman yeah, yeah. shop, or one person shop yeah. uh, to, to do that. Where um, if you're talking about one of their use cases in internal tools, when you talk about internal tools in an enterprise, Mm. Most people in the enterprise these days, I still, I think, still will use Excel spreadsheets and yeah. to some extent, maybe Google Sheets, but... Um, but, then which table... enterprises, but then which enterprises, which enterprises are using no code? It's just not, a, I don't think the culture's there. It's not it in the culture shifting. there, but, but it's shifting and, and yeah. it's probably will shift. Well, maybe I'm wrong about that. But maybe they were trying to shift years. it. <laughs> no, but maybe they're trying to shift it from the perspective of the no-code platform to build a utility, a, a, yeah, an, yeah, yeah. an application, rather right. than right. yeah. rather than just I think you're right, they, they, it. Glide particularly talk a lot about being used for internal tools. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if they look at, for I'm looking at their landing page now, the screenshots they have is you know it's, it's basically an employee overview app that they've built and that's yep. the example they're using to highlight it so i think Moshe, you're probably completely right about that yeah, yeah it's, it's it's more focused on internal tools and then the question is also how scalable it is we touched about it also in the previous episodes mm -hmm. and uh for internal tools in an enterprise it's probably doesn't need to be very scalable um depends on the size of the enterprise of course but if we're talking about you know small to medium-sized organizations or even medium to large, but not the mega-sized companies, probably scaling scale-wise, it's fine to use these utilities. Mm -hmm. But once you develop an actual product that you want to scale it to many users, what we have heard or seen is that it's not there yet. Oh yeah, one hundred percent. Yeah, I mean, Glide. So I put in that the two buckets: there's the, the no code and low code. So that the no code bucket is scrappy early stage concept validation or you know we just, how do we mitigate value risk right do people are people interested in the concept and the value that we're trying to deliver glide that's a dallo that is um softer mm -hmm. level above that you're then looking at bubble and buddy base and um, you know that's just my experience right i'm sure there are loads right. of yeah. others yeah. Out there. But that's where you're getting into slightly more scalable more complex uh, yeah project based stuff yep. exactly yeah right exactly. Now, another question is you, before you compare the Dallo with software, but a Dallo, I think it's just for mobile, unless I'm, I'm, I'm wrong. No, Dallo, you can do, you, no, you can do both. It's, oh, you can do both. Okay. It's yeah, I thought it's for yeah, some reason it's just mobile. Okay. But yeah, these software... things change. So, 
Imagine trying to teach this stuff. It changes You're right. so they change very fast. Yeah. freaking quickly. Yeah. <laughs> maybe they so develop quickly. Maybe they develop it also with no code platform. So yeah. they yeah, do it yeah, very yeah, fast. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> but that, that's that's a thought. I mean, can the no code platforms be built on top of a no code platform? Right. Uh, yeah. yeah. No I dream. mean, Softer's web Softer's website, and I'm pretty sure Dala as well, and I'm pretty sure Glide are all built with their own tools. Yeah, oh, that, that's hope so. But a yeah, website, yeah, you, um, so, yeah. you know, <laughs> a website is one type of a market uh, of a to, of a product. Um, mm. I usually just call it a marketing website yeah, sure. because mm. that's all what it's Good for. Point. Where um, yeah. the product itself is where you log in, you have yeah. functionality, you yeah. you you have some value. It's not just about the marketing. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah. yeah and true. and for that, if it's just for the website, then. You mentioned before, you know, web form and, you know, we have Wix and yeah. we have other products out there yeah, to yeah, create yeah. websites. Coming back to why software, even when you're building a landing page, I just like that it's, it's introducing product people. And again, that's my market, right? We work with product managers. Absolutely. Yeah. So, so uh, it's a good way to introduce them to these core concepts yeah. Yeah. that underpin any, any product. Okay, that's cool. Uh, that was uh, very uh, helpful. I don't have any other questions right now. Matt, do you have any anything else to, for Henry? Uh, not at this time. I, I, this was a really good conversation because, you know, yeah. I think, like we mentioned, like all these different tools are on the market now mm-hmm. or coming on the market. They all do different things. They're all like every day they're doing something different. So yeah, yeah. I've, got, I've got one question for you guys. Sorry, yeah. just kind of think. What, what's your sense having done, you know, quite a few of these interviews for what's the best tool for the beginner market and what do you feel is the best tool for the more advanced? Yeah. I mean, we're kind of in the middle of this uh, series. So, okay. so far we talked about bubble glide and now software. Uh, next okay. we're going to talk about a um, I'll wait. I'll wait to see your final conclusions then. Yes. Uh, yes. After, and after and a few more. <laughs> yeah. That's probably, probably we should um, hold on this, um, question for our wrap up. I was going to say uh, exactly. Um, episode. Pause it. I don't know. It's a, it's a good question because I, I tried both Bubble. I tried more than that. I tried Bubble, um, Glide, and in the past I also tried Adalo and Thunkable. Mm. And I know that they are changing a lot, so it's like it's hard to assess something based on what I've seen six months ago, probably. Mm. But um, my my sense was that uh, from what I've tried so far is that probably Bubble was the richest but hardest to mm. get into. Yes. Um, even for me as, as a software developer experience and stuff like that, I, I felt that there is a higher learning curve over there. And um, Glide was very simple. So it was really cool, you know, simple to start and do something with. And I was able to create quickly a couple of applications. But then I got into like uh, these um, walls of how do I do this? And mm. I, I figured, okay, I need another product to do that. And it's not just, just Glide, right? Uh, yeah, so yeah, that yeah. was that was also a good um, learning curve for me. On the other end, once I tried to started investing in one, I'm like, do I really want to go to another one and relearn another one and try to invest another one and all of that stuff? Mm-hmm. So, so where do you <laughs> where do you stop? Right. Exactly. I started off a bubble. Yeah, I, I'm not a software developer by trade. So, mm-hmm. um, you know, I started off a bubble and was like, wow, there's a lot going on here, and. I, I went immediately to the, the database analytic guy. So I immediately went to that and was like, okay, I need to, ha- how do you build this front end, back end? Uh, and then went to, I think Glide, Adalo. Uh, there's also one called Builder. They, I think they dropped mm. the E in Builder. I think, I think it's, they have the same, <laughs> that's <laughs> that another one. A trend here, yeah. Yeah, so that's <laughs> another one I looked at. So yeah, but, but once I, and I was kind of going with what Mache was talking about, do, building the prototype, kind of validating my idea. Bubble was just like out there. Like it was, it was much more than what I needed. And mm. so using Adalo and Glide, it's much more easier to, to get up and running and try to like flush stuff out. I, I did, I did build um, a couple of weeks ago, a, a quick app on Glide for our podcast. Uh, I don't know if you've seen that. So people can actually see all the podcast episodes. Oh, it's clever. Yeah who's on it, and then um, uh, the link to the episode, and they can listen to the episode right there. And that was very fast. I, I already had the Excel spreadsheet for that uh, because mm. we that's how we manage our episodes. Um, and all I had to do was make clean it up a bit, add a couple of other yeah, yeah. fields, 
Uh, so getting the data ready was, um, uh, you know, the, probably the hardest part of the entire yeah. experience. And it was very, very fast and very easy to do. So I, I enjoyed that. Um, if I will have to do that with uh, software, I will have to import it into an error table. Uh, which I assume they have. I actually, Oof, the confession I here, that. I never use Airtable. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, so I assume they have an import from, an, uh, from a spreadsheet. Yeah, that, yeah. That, I'm pretty sure there was an import function. Yeah, yeah. I remember thinking about that. And then it will be interesting to see, you know, how um, an app created on software for the same thing compares. Yeah, right? yeah, definitely. Yeah, let's see what see what you guys conclude. I think at the end would be interesting. Perfect, and we we would love to you know continue hearing about other products from you, and I'm sure you will see more of them in the future. For sure, yeah. I've got to. Yeah. Unfortunately, I've got to keep ahead of the curve. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let, keep us posted if uh, Glide uh, makes some uh, makes a move on software. I will do. I, will I, I feel do. Like, yeah, I feel yeah. like all your. I feel like they're all jockeying for uh, your, your attention with your company and stuff. <laughs> yeah, so. yeah, yeah. It's like F one. Right? <laughs> yeah, it's like F one racing. Yeah, exactly. So, well, excellent. Yeah. Thanks, Henry, so much for coming on again. Great having you back on the show. Great hearing about you know your work with your company and uh, helping product managers educate them, get them up and running. I think what you're doing yeah. uh, is great stuff. And maybe if you can remind our um, uh, audience where they can uh, reach you. Yeah, sure. So uh, first thing, follow me on LinkedIn. I'm posting every day about product. Um, Henry, just search Henry Latham, L-A-T-H-A-M for mother. If you want to learn more about how we fast track product managers to product leaders uh, by getting in touch, you build a real product, right? very hands-on uh, boot camps, go to just prod.mba, so P-R-O-D dot M-B-A. And uh, also, if you reach out to me on LinkedIn, I will send you through, we've got free my book for free. Plus, uh, I mentioned that template for selecting no-code tools, so I'll happily send that to anybody who oh, requests yeah. it as well. Yeah, maybe if you can send it to us too, we can put a link to that on our um, yeah, description. On LinkedIn. Yeah, we'll yeah, do. Awesome. Perfect. I would love to try it out myself as well. Yep. Excellent. Perfect. Nice. Well, thanks again. Appreciate it. And thanks to all the listeners. We really appreciate all the feedback and the support. And we'll talk to you later. Cheers. Thank fellas. you, everyone. It was a pleasure. Bye, everybody. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.